So far in my Element miniseries, I went over Geo, Dendro, Pyro, and Physical, each running to their own set of challenges, and while they've all gone through a turbulent couple of years, the element I want to talk about today has had a rather stable journey, arguably the most stable among the 8 elements. The interesting thing about Animo is that Mazdat, the Land of Wind, was our first area of exploration, yet it had the lowest number of playable characters in the game prior to late version 2. But despite its comparably small roster, Animo has made a name for itself as the most powerful element in the game from a very early point in Genshin's timeline, where it remains to this day. Aside from Dendro, the other three elements I talked about up to this point have all been at the bottom of the rankings based on collective opinion over which element ranked supreme. But instead of going in order and talking about Cryo, Electro, or Hydro next, I thought about making a trip to the very top and working our way down for the remainder of the series. So for today, I'll be going through the history of Animo and how it became the best element in Genshin Impact. But first, a quick and frankly very special announcement to make. I honestly never expected this of all brands to sponsor me, but you bet your ass I'll be more than happy to shout this game out. This video has been made possible by the one and only Clash of Clans. Need I explain more? It's one of the most iconic mobile game titles of all time, enjoyed by tens of millions of players on an active basis. It's a free-to-play mobile strategy game set in a persistent world that has you build cities, train troops, and attack other players to earn resources. True to its name, Clash of Clans has you form clans with other players who can then participate in clan wars together as well as give each other soldiers and chat like you would when playing an MMORPG. The sort of end goal in this game is to build as big of an empire as you possibly can and to make your clan as strong as possible, where you can then engage other clans in full-scale battles that can span up to a week. The more you conquer, the more resources you earn, and of course, other players can do the same to you. And with the Persistent World, it's a game that you can spend lots and lots of time on so you'll never run out of things to do. I'm sure many of you watching already play or have played this game before, but for those who never have, then why not check it out using the link down in the description below. A huge honor to be repping one of the most popular games in the world, but for now, let's get back to the video. Of the 7 reactive elements, Anima was in a very weird situation throughout version 1. In a similar fashion to Electro, everyone's perceptions of why Anima was so strong was for the wrong reasons, due to a limited understanding of Genshin's mechanics and systems. The first playable animal characters, Barn Traveler, were Jean, Venti, and Sucrose, who each had their own purposes. Jean was an animal-centric healer who doubled as a physical DPS. Sucrose provided offense to support through her elemental mastery boost, as well as crowd control via her elemental skill and burst, while Venti was the most damage-heavy of the three thanks to his massive vortex for a burst. The potential behind Sucrose had yet to be discovered at the time, as everyone more or less evaluated the strength of a character on an individual basis. Consequently though, that focus on individual performance worked in Jean and Venti's favor, who offered incredible utility and damage respectively. The early days of exploring with Venti, using Skyward Sauna to propel himself vertically, made it so much easier to explore Mondstadt and collect those pesky Animoculus, while his ultimate made quick work of just about every group of monsters with an eyesight. Meanwhile, Jean was the most efficient healer available, and her unique animal cleanse was a godsend to have in those Mondstadt domains. Curiously, even though players were well aware of the effects of Swirl as well as Venti and Sucrose's ability to convert their bursts into a Swirlable element, hardly anyone gave it a second thought for quite some time. And so, initial impressions towards the element were modest. Anima was a decent element, but not the best. More attention was given to elements like Pyro for their more straightforward power, understandably so. In the beginning, transformative reactions like Electro Charge, Swirl, and Overload were immeasurably weaker than amplifying ones like Vaporize and Melt. For the better part of version 1, players continued to judge a character based on what they could do in a vacuum, a mentality that was further encouraged by the overabundance of DPS units like Ganyu, Hu Tao, Yula, Yanfei, and Xiao. Xiao in particular was defined by his complete disregard for the swirl reaction altogether, choosing instead to exert pressure through sheer brute force. With him as the only new representative for months, everyone's opinion of Animo stayed most of the same. Halfway through 2021, version 1.6 was accompanied by busted to transformative reactions and the elemental mastery stat. Set improvements greatly improved the viability of non-amplifying teams, leading to further experimentation of specialized parties, such as Taser. During this time, Kasuha was introduced as well. Now, I think we can all agree that Kasuha is one of the best characters of all time, but back then, due to the Genshin community's ambivalence towards Animo, Kazuha was actually skipped by many players who thought he wasn't all that worth going after. In fact, his first banner had worse sales than even Albedo. Of course, in hindsight, there were a lot of factors responsible for why he wasn't pulled for them much, but it was demonstrative of how the player base viewed Animo overall. Version 2 is when circumstances would change for the better. Those who were prudent enough to go after Kazuha the first time around quickly showcased the insane potential behind not only the character, but Animo itself. By year 2 of Genshin, players were quite versed in what was good and what wasn't, and the idea of party efficiency entered mainstream consciousness. 
For the first year of the game, most players just threw their favorite units together. It wasn't until the release of Inazuma where what was once merely theorycraft speculation became commonplace. Teams like Freeze, Raiden National, Taser, and whatnot. Kasuha effectively brought the spotlight back to Anima. The number of similarities between him and Sucrose also led to players trying out the latter, as both were capable of building huge amounts of elemental mastery to deal damage and support their team. It was the perfect sequence of events. Elemental mastery and transformative reactions were buffed considerably, then Kazuha, someone who specializes in elemental mastery, was brought in to showcase how significant those buffs were, and theory crafting for parties and optimal combinations was well underway. Sayu and Heizo didn't really do a whole lot to change anything, but they didn't have to. Everyone was down privy to how strong Anima was as an element. The funny thing is, other than the buffs in version 1.6, which were important mind you, a lot of reasons why Anima is regarded as the best element in the game were always there, it just took a while for us to notice because we never thought to look for it. Now contrary to an element like Geo, where its power stems from the characters within and not the element itself, Animo is the exact opposite, fitting given that Wind and Earth are antithetical to each other. That's not to say Kazuha, Venti, Sucrose, or Wanderer don't have their own merits, but I will say that Animo mechanically holds a lot of equity in its own success, so let's go through all the reasons one at a time. The first and most prevalent reason comes from Animo's only reaction, Swirl. It is a very simple premise. Whenever Animo comes in contact with a target affected by Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, it creates a burst of that element's damage to the primary target and all nearby enemies, essentially spreading that element to everything else. Makes sense, wind blows stuff around. By technicality, Animo can deal 5 different elemental damages, or in other words, all Animo units are capable of doing Pyro, Electro, Cryo, and or Hydro damage, especially those with abilities that have elemental absorption like Venti's Burst. This can allow for all kinds of reaction chaining when done correctly, and with most animal units having massive area coverage on their attacks, they can inflict huge damage in a wide radius, making them incredibly efficient when fighting clusters of enemies. That's the whole basis for Taser Team's constant application of Electro and Hydro spread via Anima to everything to shred them to pieces through Electro Charge. The potential behind Swirl's ability to spread other elements to all nearby targets cannot be overstated. Animo can be used to apply Hydro to all enemies, so your Pyro DPS can abuse the crap out of Vaporize. It can be used to apply Hydro or Cryo to all enemies, so you can permafreeze everything. It can be used to apply Electro to all enemies or Taser teams. In a manner of speaking, Animo is the strongest element in the game because it's 5 elements in one, or in some cases, it's better than the original elements because every single target can swirl to other targets, so you have spread damage on top of spread damage on top of elemental reactions. Few non animal characters, if any, have the same area coverage as them, so if hypothetically you're running a freeze team consisting of Ayaka, Shinhua, and Xingqiu, instead of bringing a second Hydro character, you can bring an animal unit like Kazuha, Suko, Serventi, and have them absorb Xingqiu's Hydro to deal Hydro damage themselves. Swirl might very well be the single most broken reaction in the game. Like, this reaction alone would be enough to make animal top tier. Granted, it doesn't work as effectively for Vaporize or Melt since it prioritizes quantity over quality, but during 2022 and now 2023, players have been weaning off of Vaporize or Melt teams and going all in on reaction spam. And what better way to exercise that than through a reaction that spreads elements to every monster around it that also triggers a reaction. It would be one thing if it dealt elemental damage in an AoE but didn't trigger reactions, but Swirl can hypothetically take Hydro from one enemy and toss it onto another enemy affected by Electro to cause Electro Charge. Animo basically has all of its own benefits, as well as the benefits and properties of whatever element it swirls at no drawback. The second reason is tied to the stat of choice. Some elements have a certain parameter associated with most of its cast members. For example, Hydro units are known for revolving around HP, which is even more evident by its elemental resonance, boosting the entire party's max health by 25%. Pyro units are very attack-centric. Resonance gives attack. Many of its characters have attack buffs like Shangling Squall buff, Venice Fantastic Voyage, or Hu Tao Self buff. Shio is very defensive with most of its roster scaling off defense. Animal specific stat is Elemental Mastery, which it now shares with Dendro. Well, technically it's only Kazuha, Sucrose, Venti, and maybe Hazel, but seeing as two of them are tier 0 units, that's probably all you need anyway. Both Sucrose and Kazuha can supplement the team's DPS by essentially spreading their elemental mastery to everyone. Sucrose's passive talent increases her team's EM by 20% of hers whenever her skill or burst damages an enemy, while Kazuha grants an elemental damage boost to their party by a portion of his EM whenever doing Swirl. The convenient part is that you sacrifice very little damage by itemizing for elemental mastery since EM is inherently an offensive stat. Not only are you increasing your party's total DPS through buffs, but you're also boosting your own DPS in Swirl and any subsequent reaction, where most of your damage comes from anyway. Probably should have mentioned that actually. Let's say your Kazuha has 1000 EM and you trigger an Electro Swirl onto a target affected by Hydro. First, the damage from Swirl itself will scale off as 1000 EM, and then the ensuing Electro Charge reaction will also scale off as 1000 EM. It's a win-win, and a privilege not many characters have. 
Building defense on Noel lets it convert a portion of that defense into attack, but since defense is not an offensive stat by nature, you're taking one step back to take two steps forward. Whereas Elemental Mastery is an offensive stat by nature, meaning you're taking zero step back and two steps forward or even three. Even for those who don't have built-in Elemental Mastery scaling like Venti can still benefit from the stat because of how many reactions he pulls off. That's why one of his best weapons is the Stringless, a bow with an EM substat. Thanks to the increase in scaling from version 1.6, it's now a viable strategy to go for frequency over force. Actually, most of the time, it's better than one single reaction. Third reason is crowd control. Outside of boss fights, Genshin is by and large a hack and slash beat em up game, where you fight waves of enemies to make progress. Every element has a handful of units with good area coverage, but when designing a team, it can be hard to keep enemies together over the course of a fight, especially if those enemies move around a lot. You might have one character with very good AoE like Shangling, but someone else who's primarily single target like Xinqiu. That's where Animo comes in. Most of its units have a way to corral mobs together to make it easy for you to land your combo on all of them. Kazuha's skill, Sucrose's skill, Venti's burst, Jean's skill, Farazan's skill, Hazel's skill, etc. If you think about it, crowd control is a form of DPS. The more enemies you hit with a single attack, the more damage you deal overall. Therefore, animal characters, in addition to their reactions and buffs, increase your team's efficiency by keeping everyone together. No one demonstrates this better than Venti. His ultimate single-handedly carries you through any spiral abyss floor with a bunch of enemies. If you aim it at the center of the room, it should drag everyone towards it. Some try to downplay the significance of this by arguing it doesn't stagger heavy monsters like the Lara Churl or Samurai Dudes. True. However, it still pulls them towards the center of the attack. That's the important part. It helps if the enemy is unable to do anything, but so long as you can keep them jumbled up together, you can pull off whatever combo you want. Fourth reason, Veridus and Venerer. I know this doesn't really pertain to the characters or element, but as far as the elemental artifact sets go, Animo has the best one, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Like his counterparts, the 2-piece bonus gives you 15% bonus animal damage. As to the 4-piece, it increases swirl damage by 60%. Bear in mind, unless mistaken, that's after you factor in the elemental mastery scaling and all that. Pretty serious business. If that wasn't enough, it also breaks the enemy's resistance to whatever the element infused in the swirl is by 40% for 10 seconds. Remember when I said that sometimes animal units do a better job at Hydro, Pyro, Electro, or Cryo stuff than the very units who belong to those elements? This is partly why. Shredding a target's elemental rest by 40% is equivalent to a 1.67 times multiplier, so you do even more damage. If you ever wondered why Sucrose is a main damage dealer in a Taser team despite being a quote-unquote support, this is why. It's almost comical that Veritas and Venerer does a better job at increasing Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, and Electro DPS than each element's respective artifact set. I have no idea what Mihoya was thinking when they made this. There's no better explanation other than it's broken. And finally, reason number 5. All of Animo's characters, the good ones anyway, are extremely consistent. They have consistent uptime, consistently short field time, consistent applications, and consistent use cases. It's the only element in the game that can do what it does. Theoretically, you can compare Pyro and Electro to each other since both are meant to deal damage at the end of the day, but no other element has crowd control, reaction chaining, or driving to this degree. One character can serve as two or three of five elements. For lack of a better way to put it, Mihoyo might have accidentally made Animo too powerful that I'm starting to believe they intentionally held off on releasing new Animo units until just recently with Farazan, Hazel, and Wander because they didn't want to power creep the game. Also, notice how none of the new characters have the same kind of playstyle as Kasuha, Venti, and Sucrose. Farazan sort of has a mini Sucrose either or aim shot after using a skill, but compared to Sucrose, it's basically a tiny breeze. I suppose Animo faces a similar predicament as Pyro. Both elements have a few characters who are so absurdly overloaded that in order to make new characters worth using, they have to be either just as overloaded or more. Fortunately for Animo, it has a lot more use cases, so there's still a lot more room for development, contrary to Pyro's only real use case being damage. Honestly, I feel like a lot of what makes Animo so valuable could have been done for every other element. Mihoyo just chose not to. There's such an uneven distribution of roles between the seven elements. Animo as an element has crowd control, reaction chaining, debuffing the enemy, buffing your party, spreading elemental damage, even mobility. Kazuha, Xiao, and Wander make exploration convenient as all hell. On the other hand, when you think of Electro as an archetype, it's just damage. When you think of Pyro, it's just damage. When you think of Geo, it's mostly damage, maybe some tankiness, and creating structures. Cryo is damage and freeze, Hydro's damage and healing. Why Anima has so many extra universal things while the other elements have only one or two makes no sense to me. 
But altogether, Anemo is the strongest element in Genshin Impact, just unfairly so. I'm not saying she got nerfed or anything, however I do wish the other elements had side jobs of their own so to speak. By giving each of them a purpose that only members of their element can do, that might solve the nagging issue of some elements being really broken and others being complete trash. I just don't know what that would be. What are your thoughts on the animal elements though? Do you think I'm overrating their strengths too much, or do you agree that it's the best element in the game? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you could leave a like and sub to the channel. Also, follow me on Twitter, at varsvarim, join my Discord server, and check out my other element episodes if you haven't yet. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Take care.